I agree with you. I agree. Opinions of these people are different. I agree. I agree with you. But you see that opinion. That that op that opinion. <laughs> that opinion is coming from the same book. Yeah. It is coming from the same book. The fact is, in John 3:16, where our born-again Christian friends say, it says that the begotten Son. They say it's not the way the born-again Christians say. Jesus could never have been God. They are using the same Bible answer. Yes, they are. Now, if I can just finish, my friend, if I can just finish. You see, then you have the Unitarians, the Christadelphians, the Baptists. All of them. My friend, can I can I just finish? You see, but the important distinction between what you are talking about and the rest of the world is that all of you are using that one book. Now, you know, it simply means that without an objective criteria, you can interpret the Bible to your whims and fancies and just claim it's the Holy Spirit that inspired you. That's your problem. Hallelujah. Now, there's another problem. You see, from what you said, the 2 Timothy 3.16 says, All scripture is inspired of God for doctrine, reproof, correction, and instruction unto righteousness. It is a completely independent statement. It is not a contextualized statement. And I have asked this again and again to my Christian friends. When it says all scripture, it includes the Hindus. Scripture. You see, yeah, you, what? you see, my friend, it says all scripture is inspired of God. What does all scripture mean? I agree with you. I agree. I agree. Of course it is. You know, you know, you know what I'm pointing out. Do you know what I'm pointing out? I'm pointing to, out to you how easy it is to interpret according to your wins and fancies. If you don't mind, I would point out that there is a contextual argument. There is contextual There is context to it. What is it? It's that it was written by Jews, by Jews, believers, and Christians. You were about to say for Jews, weren't you? You were. Thank you very much. That's the end of your argument. <laughs> no, no, with respect. I'm, I'm saying it in sincerity. My friend, according to Judaism, according to when you read when you read a New Testament book and you want to look at it contextually, you need to understand what the audience was going to understand. I agree. I, I agree with you. Okay, so what was, your was, point? was the audience going to was the audience going to understand Jesus was God? No, not from that particular. Not from the Jewish perspective. Calm down. Because they because they couldn't understand it does not mean it's not true. Ah, excellent point. Because they couldn't understand. Bec my friend, of course I am. Because they couldn't understand it, just as equally it couldn't be true. I'm sorry. Oh. If they couldn't understand it, thank you. You see, if you carry on with it, no, I'm, sure I'm saying thank you to him. You see, my friend, hey, my friend, give me credit, I'm dealing with five people at the same time here. You see, at the end of the, <laughs> at the, end of the day, a Muslim, a Christian, a Hindu, a Jew, uh, anybody is going to come here and claim, my book is from God, my book is from God. My, every one of them is claiming so. Everyone has a belief behind them, okay? okay. Now, a reasonable person, Isaiah 117 says, Come, let us reason, says the Lord. 1 Thessalonians 5.21 says, Prove all things and hold on to that which is good. Yeah? yeah? Actually, they do, my friend. Yeah? You see, the point is, if everyone is claiming they are from God, it is so easy for misunderstandings to creep into texts that cannot be proved to be from God. Very easily. As, as we can see, the Jehovah's, the Jehovah's Witnesses for example, uh, my friend, can you open the uh, book of Matthew, chapter 17, verse 21? Yeah? You see, if you look at it very carefully, one after the other, you will find that there is a problem. It's all a matter of interpretation. For example, I have got a Bible at home. It's a pretty big one. status. You see, it says in there, 1 John, chapter 5, verse 7, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. Is that still uh, in 1 John 5, 7? I'm not sure. I don't know. If don't you want to check it? Check it. Just check it. What do you want? First, uh, no, uh, first let's go to 1721. Where is it? Where is it? 
Matthew. He said John. Uh, this is Matthew. Yeah, it's Matthew 17. He's right. Matthew verse 17, 20. It's not there. It goes verse 20 and it goes to verse 22. There's well, no 21. It's disappeared now. 21 has gone. Now, you see, you see, my friend, please. There you are. Thank you. Now, if, let's go to 1 John 5, 7. One, no, let's go to 1 John 5, 7. <laughs> I have. You're right, my friend. Sorry, what was that you said, sis? It's not his Bible. This one is not his Bible. No. So can I have one? It is. You do believe in this, do you? One second, sister. I couldn't hear you. 1 John, 1 John 5, 7. Look, there are three witnesses, the spirit, the water, and the blood. Now, this is not in the translation I have. The, the point here, and there was the, the King James, yeah, yeah. inserted that in the 16th century. Yes. Which is why that translation so does, is more recent as the movie. I, I agree with you, but you see, you know, I agree with you, and it's good. But the point is, and it's a very fatal point here, what are you looking at that is original that the King James Version did not look at? I mean, the King James... Um, what a well, question of belief, factually speaking. You see, for example, well, I have well, asked my friend here text. to read John no, 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 17, we, verse 21, yeah. and uh, he silently couldn't read it. <laughs> not his fault, it's not there. Okay? But now the question is, uh, 10 years ago, I've got a Bible. Yeah. It has got verse 21. Is that in spite of God, or is well, this in spite of God? Actually, actually, do check it. We might, we might do. Mm -hmm. Matthew, Matthew chapter 17, verse 21. Matthew. We might have it. Yeah? Which one we might have it. Yeah? No, it might have it. Yeah. It doesn't have it. Huh? Even your Bible doesn't have it. Yeah? Now, not only that, my friend, look. I go to the, can you go to the book of Acts chapter 8, verse 37? Hopefully it's there. <laughs> I'm glad you are saying that because it isn't in this one. 8, well, eight, eight verse, verse 37. 37. <laughs> it's not there. Okay, it's not there. What is happening to this verse? Why are they suddenly disappearing? Now, the amazing thing is, my friend, you see... What are in those verses? Do you know? <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> right. my, my sister, you were going to ask a question. No, What's your question? Like, do you want me to answer why or not? In the why? Okay, the reason is that we believe as the ultimate word of God, it says that it's not just found once, it's found continually. Like the Dead Sea Scrolls, which we have found, or we see um, so proof that the Bible is the same over and over and over again. No, no, okay. no, wait, don't my friend, my friend, my friend. Why are you scared of those? Sister, carry on talking. Carry on talking. Okay, so. The yeah, verses that are taken out are verses that may or may not have been in all manuscripts. And so these would be the ones that we would say, everything that's in here, if it's missing a verse, that means that it wasn't maybe in every single one of the scriptures that we have found. Like the old evidence. It's a reasonable uh, assumption here which you have provided. You see, my question just a few minutes ago said, okay, fair enough. Where are you taking this from? What are the original sources? Different verses, all of these. But you see, my sister, the Dead Sea Scrolls were only recently discovered. I know, but they well, prove that what we have is true. Right. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Uh, I'll tell you what. My friend. I'm thinking. If you were found the Dead Sea Scrolls. Yes. Otherwise, then you would lay claim to the fact that the Jews in fact My friend, where are the Dead Sea Scrolls right now? Where are they? Where are the Dead Sea Scrolls right now? Where are they? My friend, where are they? Yes, I know where they are. Where are they? My friend, where are they? Tell us why play these games. Tell us. Where, where are they? I'm not playing games, my friend. No, I do know. It's a very important one. You see, my friend doesn't seem to be aware of the real reasons behind why they are not in action today. The Dead Sea Scrolls, because they completely disagreed with. Where are they? Can I finish? Can I finish? Don't get excited, my friend. You see, I asked you a question which you couldn't answer. Calm down. Okay, let me come back to you, my friend. You don't mind me calling you a friend, do you? Right. You see, the assumption here is based on one thing. If you go back to 1611, for example, yes, the Latin Vulgate of Jerome. Yes, go back to 325 AD and the Council of Nicaea, you will find that something has to be done about what can be considered canonical. Thank you very much. Yeah? What can be considered canonical? Okay? Yeah? 
what can be considered canonical. But the amazing thing here is now, you see, 2 Timothy 3.16 says, all scripture is inspired of God. Okay. At one time, 1721 was considered, was that the word of God? Yeah. It was. It was. And today it isn't. But it's not there. Yes. The admission, the admission okay. is it's not there. Does that include the apocryphal one? No, I'm asking. The is that you are looking for that are lacking in these two things. Do not change anything in the Bible. Having them in or having them out does not change any theology that we were in the Bible. So this, it's not like we're taking out the verses of the Rams Red Pair. We're not taking out anything that's really crucial. And so I don't understand. Hey, my sister, you are not familiar with Christian history, are you? Luke, 20, Luke 24, 51, and Mark 19, 16 were dealing with the resurrection. They were removed from the RSD of 1973. Take away the fact that the it's a fundamental verse of the Bible. It was taken away. And there were so many complaints from the masses, usually the ignorant ones, that the scholars were forced to put them back in. And you find them again today. For example, uh, my, my, my friend, my friend, actually, uh, actually, you see, if you, if you want to deal with it as technically as that, I can, I, can, I can suggest to you, do you know this idea of the exchange of prisoners at the Passover between Barabbas and Jesus? Yes. Yeah, right. yeah. Non-existent in uh, Hebrew tradition. It never happened. And, uh, one second, one second. Let me finish. Let me finish, my friend. Yeah? Uh, uh, well, now, we are now you are doing what you are going to accuse me of doing. They are twisting everything to suit them like my Christian friends do. So can I carry on? Okay. Should I tell you why? Because I'm dealing with evidence. But it's their history. Who's history? Who would know more than Yeah, yeah. You see, my sister. Can I, can I, can I? Please, my sister. You see, the fact is, whatever the statements are, according to you, they don't change the fundamental outlook. Okay? But the point that I was making has nothing to do with what you believe. My point was, if you are claiming, well, it doesn't alter the story of the Bible, Look, no problem with your belief, but the fact is, evidentially, it falls down. You see, I asked Christians earlier on, who, who unfortunately, the, the Christian friend, who, yes, I asked him the same thing, and he claimed to be a scientist also, which was strange. He says, look, I asked him for a criteria. How do I determine this is from God? He says, there isn't one in the Bible. I said, look, I'm glad you're making the admission. At least you are showing yourself to be honest. Now, can I ask you, sister, is there a criteria in the Bible for me to prove objectively it is from God. Let me, yeah. Is there a criteria in the Bible objectively for me to prove it's from God? It's from God, yeah. No, a criteria. What do you mean by it? Like, so you want me... You see, for example, if I say the criteria for a female is X, Y, and Z, not chromosomes. No, no, my sister. I'm not saying... You see, for example, let me give you this, yeah? Like in the compilations of the Bible. I mean, at some point, they took all the letters and then compilated them and what... That's right. That, that is a history, okay? What... My, my sister... No. My question is simple. You see, if... Is the creator perfect? I'm going on belief. Yes? Perfect. So anything that is associated with Aya, anything associated with uh, the creator should be perfect. No, we're associated with the creator and we're not perfect. Oh, well, John 17, 21 says we can be perfect. But if you look at it carefully, if you can, if, if you can deal with it, objectively speaking, I ask this. I come to the Bible and I say, okay, what makes this book think it's from God? I want a criteria. I don't want a belief. You know, one, one Christian told me, he says, you want to know if it's from God? Go down on your knees, pray to God and tell him, God, tell me is this. I said, that is silly. You're asking me, as somebody said, you know, suck the lolly and then ask. It's silly to say that, yes? It's too late by then. Objectively, is there a criteria for me to determine that every statement in the Bible is from God? Give me an example of what an objective criteria would be. Well, for example, what for, for, your text? for what text? I haven't would mentioned you, any text. You, would you no, mention no, until it is proven to me. You see, and it's not a question of belief, it's a question of assessing the facts and clearly coming to a conclusion, and with the Creator being perfect, and according to believers, He created us, He is able to provide the necessary criteria which will clearly suit our nature and our reason. Isaiah 117 says, Come, let us reason, said the Lord. I want to ask. 
Can I use reason on the God, on the uh, word that you claim to be from God? So you're appealing to facts, right? It's okay. I, I, can't, I can't explain in English any more than that. I can talk in my language if you want. <laughs> I won't have I mean, are you exactly. trying to ask me why? Oh, wait, can I re-ask yeah. questions? Sure. Like, are you trying to ask me why I believe the Bible is true? Why I feel not why you believe, not why. I want to know if, uh, independently, if I woke up to the Bible, right. how can I establish it from God, apart from believing what you believe? Because any belief, any belief is subjective. For example, I said to you, if you are a born-again Christian, are you led by the Holy Spirit? Yeah. If you are a Jehovah's Witness, are you led by the Holy Spirit? says yes. The Baptist, are you led by the... He says, all of you say yes. Uh, my, friend, my friend in Waco, Texas, it all happens in America anyway. In Waco, you are American, aren't you? Yes. You see, my friend, you are right. I, I accept what you are saying. The fact I'm... No, I'm not talking about caste. My friend knows that. The fact is, he used the Bible. Our friend, what was his name? Koresh. David Koresh. David Koresh. He used the Bible. Okay, can I just... Uh, you know, uh, my, my friend... Uh, you see, our friend... That's all the girls in there, so therefore, would it matter no, my, what's in my, the Bible? No. My, 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 my friend, yes. I agree with what you are saying, but the fact is he used the Bible. You see, at the end of the day... You could, you could use everything. Excellent! I thought I it was no, you, you know, you are right. Why you need an independent objective criteria. You can't use subjectivity, because he didn't. You just agreed with me. You can't use it as a test. No. Uh, what, what do you mean by objectivity? Yeah, you need to explain what you mean by objectivity. You can't use... Are there any religious laws? Are there any religious laws? You, you can't use reason... You can't reason to know God. You can't use reason to know God. Who created reason? God did. God did. For what? To, to, well, to some extent, yeah, you can use... No, no, to us. You are changing your shift now. Go for the move, my friend. What did he use? I said you can't use reason alone to know God. Excellent. So what else do I need? You need something more. What? What? You need something more. What? 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 Don't just say you know something. What? Hey, it's all right. We'll carry on. Right. My, my, my friend. My friend, you see, I've got ten people talking. I've got only one pair of ears. No, no, you see, you said faith. You said faith. No, no, he's not. I'm higher. You said faith, okay? Uh, At the end of the day, say, as I started, I, exactly, I said at the end, yeah? You see, my friend, I, I want to trouble you once more. Can I have the... Is this unseen? So it doesn't need faith, does it? You can objectively analyze it. The object of it, the object of it is unseen. Ah, yes, yes, yes. So if the object of this is unseen, he can... believe that this is the truth about the object that you're referring to. No, that's a belief. The Creator can provide the necessary criteria for individuals like me to prove to me, hey presto, I am God and this is my word. And it doesn't need to be hidden tangible. And if we, do, if we deal with that, that's another thing. But as far as translations are concerned, look, I, I am willing to concede. So one second. I, I'm, I, I'm telling you, okay, let me give you an example. This, this book here claims uh, in Psalm 18 verse 30, it says the word of God is flawless. The way of God is perfect. Excuse me. And the word of God is flawless. Now, I use that as a criteria and say that if this was the word of God, I have to exclude it. I have to disqualify it by virtue of going to Matthew chapter 17, verse 21 and finding it isn't there. Just because someone inserted a verse in there that was Now, that's belief. That's not objective criteria. You are agreeing with me. Yes, I do Thank you. you. That's fine. That discussion is over. You have accepted something that you believe in which you shouldn't be believing in. No. You just said yes. I've agreed to the fact that someone inserted a verse in there which is incorrect. Which is what you see. discovered it was right. But you see, my friend, if it's as easy to mess about with what is from God, then uh, God bless us all, isn't it? I suppose. Yes? Yes. You see, there's a saying in Arabic. Yeah, I'm going to try. I'm not going to try Arabic, but there's a saying. It says, "If such are the preachers, God bless the congregation." Who gave you this book? The preachers did. God bless you all, because if you carry on following them, you are destined for what Jesus called the fire, and that's where 
unfortunately, people will go according to your belief. Are there any, now, are there any religious texts? That's a belief, me, by the way. Tell me. Are there any religious texts that, call, that fulfill your criteria of reliable and objective? I would be telling you what they are. So no, but the, no, no, no. Let, let, no, 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 my friend. You know what you are doing? What? You are hiding, the, you know, different religions to try and justify your weak point. You see, my friend. But we're asking it back on you. And who told you to interfere? I'm asking the same question that you asked me. You see, my friend. Can I just finish? I am telling you. You see, it's easy to dismiss what I have just seriously said by suggesting to me, okay, does any book meet the proven, What you've proven is it is possible to insert a, an incorrect verse in the Bible, and you will get some people to believe it for a certain amount of time, and I believe that God allowed that to, you know, allow Your belief is up to you, like it was for David, correct? You are in the same boat. The fact that I read it and believe it is true is a belief. Okay, let me, let me, let me, let me get this on an evidential criteria rather than belief, yeah? Look. You have just admitted that maybe somebody added something in, okay? But up to this time, before I pointed it out to you, you were completely ob oblivious of this fact until I pointed it out to you. On the spot here, you have man managed to try and justify why you still believe in it. That only an unreasonable person would do. I'm because no, you have not gone on... The difference between unreasonable and perfectly rational. I do not believe... I do not... You are being perfectly rational? No, I believe Thank that you. we do not need to only, that we cannot gain knowledge of God and complete knowledge of God only through reason. You see, my friend, look, 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 look. That's why people have made idols. Okay, look, uh, I agree with you. Some people have made Jesus Christ into an idol. I agree with you. And they made it into God as well. Do you believe him to be God? Yeah. Oh, okay, fair enough. Oh, fair enough. Oh, is God and Son and Son? Hang on, God is eternity. God cannot take the one away from the three of God. When did this idea of the Trinity come into Christian teaching? When did it come into when did it come into official Christian teaching? Right from Genesis. Uh, when did he come into yeah. official Christian uh, teaching? The doctrine of the Trinity was developed, I think, in the 3rd or 4th century. 325 AD at the Council of Nicaea. Before that, what did they believe in? The same. The doctrine, they the doctrine didn't. of the Trinity was established. They the didn't, my the friend. It was the unity. And that is why the Council of Nicaea... Trinity is three at the one. Council the is one. I said a unity. Oh, no, belief. You see, at the Council of Nicaea, the my friend... Unity. You are not familiar with Christian history, are you? A little bit. A little bit, okay. Council of Nicaea, 325 AD. Yeah. You have Athanasius on one side who was propagating this idea of the Trinity, yeah. and you have got... It's not a waste of time, my friend. You see, facts usually are a waste of time to people who are having difficulty. You see, on, on the other side, you have Arius. What did he believe in? I don't. Are you praying, my friend? Are you praying? No, I'm speaking. Are you speaking to whom? Speak to you. Oh, well, can I finish before yeah. you can? Because you are being very rude, you see. Uh, my friend. Arius is on one side, Athanasius. Athanasius is the one who is uh, propagating this idea of the Trinity. Arius is saying, no, there's a unity of God, not a tri-unity. He said there's only one God, it's Jesus a Christ. Unity, not a unity. No, 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 it isn't. I'll, I'll, and I can explain so very easily belief? why. No, it's not a belief. It's factually based. You see, my friend, if, I can, unity. if I can just finish, I know. If I can just finish, uh, I'm glad you're laughing. You see, if you take it, okay, Arius is contending and he showed clear scriptural evidence that there is no way you can elevate Christ to being the Son of God in its literal sense, or God. He clearly proved it. However, do you know, uh, well, my friend, you should familiarize yourself with these facts of Christian history. They may lead you to truth. You never know, whatever that is. You see, who was presiding over this council? I don't know. Please tell us. It was Emperor Constantine, and he was a pagan. Yeah. <laughs> now, are you telling and me... He converted at this point. He converted. No, he hadn't. Oh. No, he hadn't. You see, the strange thing here is that your doctrines that you are so vehemently believing in today yeah. were actually stamped by uh, uh, Constantine, who was a pagan. And you know what that pagan belief was? No. Believing in God having come down as a human being. Yeah. Now, it makes all sense, doesn't it? Uh, of course on, it does. On, on, I don't want to hang on. I'll choke to death, my friend. Look. <laughs>
<laughs> yes, they did. And God. And, and that. Certain Christian religion, right, and Christianity, okay, is that there's a deep, deep thing that's going on within certain of these religions. We are actually still worshipping the sun. And we are not putting Jesus as an idol. He is not on the cross. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, that is not from God. Okay, that look, let me give you a simple example of what you are saying. You see, Jesus Christ, did he used to pray to God, yes or no? Yeah. He used to pray. Yes. Hang on, hang on, hang on. He used to pray to the Father. Okay. Which did, is God the Father. Did Jesus pray to the Father? Yes, he did. Okay, God the Father. God yes. the Father. So he was God the Son. Yes. He was God yes. the Son. Okay, so God the Son is praying to God the Father. The and I, I talk to myself. Oh, yes. Talk to yourself. <laughs> Don't do that here. <laughs> they will certify you medically. <laughs> anyway, you see, if you take it further, okay, if, if you take it further, you see, God the Son is asking God the Father, Father, take this away from me nevertheless not as i will but as you will as, as his will in the garden of gethsemane yeah you see the point here is was he surrendering his will to god the father yes. simple isn't it you know he was submitting his will to god yes emphasis on submission but does he ask to be saved from death he said, he said if it is possible that this cup pass from me that yeah saying, it is possible for, for redemption for mankind to happen without my death, but it happens. No, that's a belief. No, I'm asking you factually no, speaking. I factually, think that's what Jesus was saying. Okay, what do you think is different? But facts speak for themselves. The facts in the Bible, Matthew chapter 26, verse 36, if you want to check it. There, I'm glad you said that. I'm glad you said that. I'm glad you said that. Glad you said that. But however, the interpretation, I'm not even interpreting. I'm quoting the biblical verse. I can interpret it, and you won't have any ground to stand on. However, I won't do that. They'll be unjust to you. But going to Matthew 26, 36, he is asking, never let, take this cup away from me. So the question arises, which cup is he talking about? The cup of death. Oh, okay, okay, okay my friend. Yes. Matthew 26, verse 36. Yeah? He's praying to be saved from something. I want to know what it is. I asked Christian scholars and they said it was death. Okay. So now the question is, if he prayed to God the Father... The same way that at that dinner he had given the... He had right. Given the, if, he prayed the God the, if he prayed God, to God the Father, as God the Son, yeah. to be saved from death, was he heard in his prayer? He was heard, he said, if it is possible... Right. Did God, did God accept his prayer and save him? God listened to his prayer. God didn't mean to Did he save him? Jesus did not ask to be saved. Jesus asked for God's will to be done. And if it is possible for God's will... Jesus asked, yes, and the text yes, says, yes. if it is possible for your will to be done without me dying, let it happen. Uh, can you, so, you want to read it? Uh, this is the same verse that you just quoted. I know, just read it. And you will see your interpretation has nothing to do with the fact. What is the verse? Oh, yeah, well, it is, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe they've already quickly changed it. You know Matthew 26, verse 36 onward. Yeah? 36 onward. Uh, Once more, Jesus went away yeah. and prayed, My father, yeah. this cup of suffering cannot be yeah. taken away unless I drink it. Yes. If this cup of suffering yes. cannot be taken away it, unless it I drink it, your will be done. Yes. Right what, King? Look, save me. Yes, but he's... he's, 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 he's one second. Okay. If, okay. if, if, if I can be saved in your will of redemption for mankind, so happen. No, 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 no. It doesn't say redemption for mankind. That's what I'm telling you. And you have just agreed with me. It doesn't well, say that. Would you However, no, the, this, this is, is the amazing thing. Was he a human being there? Jesus is a human being there. So did, he have, did, yes. did, he, did he have Did he have the same fears any human being would have of impending death? Yes. yes. So in the context of fear, he prayed to God. Yes. Nothing to do with humanity. What do you mean nothing to do with Yes. 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 What do you mean nothing to do with Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Yes. Come on. Oh, I said. You see, my friend, take it further. John chapter 11, verse 41. You know what? Jesus Christ, starting from John chapter 11, yes? Lazarus is sick. Okay. Yeah? So these guys come to Jesus and tell him, look, your beloved one is ill. Jesus Christ tells them, he said, look, don't worry, his illness will not lead him to die. Did he die? What are you talking about? <laughs> the Gospel of John chapter 11 onward. Yes? 
It's this type of verse 1. And you see the story is there. Now, no, I'm not. No, yeah, look. Hello, good guy, good guy. You see, my friend. I'm not ignoring him. You see, he is taking us on a different tangent, which is unfair to all of us, including everybody who is listening. Okay? But, now, you see. No, no, no. Okay. The final result of the sickness will not be the death of us. This has happened in order to bring glory Excellent. to God. My friend, my, my, my friend, I'm glad you brought this up. Can you take your Bible? Anybody got another Bible here? Can you, can, can you, can you just bring it? Can you bring it out? Thank you, my friend. I just go to that verse. Okay. This is interesting. 